Have you been to Australia before, Mr. Pitsy? My family migrated when I was 16. And is this trip business or pleasure? I've come to see my family. Perhaps I'll convince you to stay this time, Mr. Pitsy. A lot changes in 22 years. No, it's the taxes, mate. Highest in the world. That's what's killing this country. Take this driving a cab. I only do it part-time, but if I tell the tax man what I earn, then he'd grab half of it, just like that. I mean, you'd have to be a mug, wouldn't you? You only work part-time? Yeah, I'm a student. What are you studying? Law, mate. Well, that's where the money is. Told you, they're down the back. Hello, Douglas. I didn't know you were in Australia. No one knows. Told Jean it would be a wasted trip. You weren't going to come back with her, were you? Well, I'm here now. Here? You're here. My sister isn't. Excuse me, Mr. Shaw. What is it now? Uh, we thought you might know how to dismantle the table. We uh, don't want to damage it. Mind if I look around? Go ahead. It's your wife's house. Why'd you come back? The family's making all the arrangements. I've come to see Robbie. Have you heard from him? No. Can I get into his flat? What for? Have a look around. Oh, maybe I can get you a key. When? When I finish here. Tomorrow. Michael is a film director. He left two months ago. Now he thinks he's entitled to half the estate. She always went for no purpose. You never did approve, did you, Douglas? The paper said she was blown to pieces. Is that true? Yes, it's true. You should have taken better care of her, Paolo. You heard of that? It was beyond my control. Was it? 
all those years, beyond your control. Leonardo. Paolo. Paolo. Australia now. Now try this one. Salute ancora. Salute. Salute. You're right. Good, very good. Good. <laughs> what do you mean good? It's the best. Not good enough to win four gold medals at last year's show. Allora, papà, più notizie di Roberto. Non si è più visto da quando ha finito la scuola. Qui stava come casa sua. Ti ricordi Tony Allanti? Era compagno di Leni di scuola. Roby andava a ciclo cross con i suoi due figli. In cerca di posti per loro padre. Dai. Tony non c'entra niente con quell'affare. È una Lampi, sì o no? Tony non c'entra con quell'affare, Leni. Marijuana. Some of the locals have got plantations up in the hills, and two of Tony's cousins got busted a couple of years ago. Rumor has it they've started up again. Robbie was mixed up in it? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't worry. Tony and these kids, they're completely straight. Ma lui ce l'ha con gli allampi per via di quello che è successo in Calabria. Gli allampi sono sempre guai. Anche Alessandro Magno ebbe guai con gli alampi. Eh, ma qui non siamo in Calabria. Questa è l'Australia. Non vuol dire ce l'hanno nel sangue. Ma non sai che mi sembri? Mi sembri come quelli dei giornali che non ce la fanno a distinguere fra un italiano e quell'altro. E quindi siamo tutti mafiosi. Ce l'hanno nel sangue, Dio. E, e tu sei proprio uguale, eh? Per te gli alampi sono tutti un drangata. Gli alampi sono un drangata. Ammazzarono tuo nonno. Non dimenticarlo mai. Ma questo è tutto passato, non sei venuto in Australia per scordarti tutto questo. Australia sei in Italia! Tu non sei niente! È meglio che tenere la bocca chiusa quando non sei niente! Fai solo brutta figura! Not with your hands. But Grandpa doesn't. I don't care what Grandpa does, I'm telling you not to do it, all right? Lenny. I'm, I'm going to check on the crashes.
Is she all right? Oh. Yeah, she's fine. It's just the night terrors. She gets them every now and then. You want a cover? Yes, thank you. Robbie used to get them too when he was a little. Didn't you miss him, Paolo? Is there any more milk? In the jug there. You know, Dad... He was heartbroken when you didn't make it to Mum's funeral. He couldn't understand, Paolo. You should talk to him. Does he still milk the cow? Every morning. Holding on to the old ways. Oh, he can feel we're all slipping away, all right. The kids, they'd rather go to Disneyland than Calabria. But that's why he came here, so we'd have the choice. Some choice. No, Carlo, no, no. You were wrong about Australia. The... All, all right, OK, so we don't have thousands of years of culture and tradition like you used to go on about all the time. But this is a civilised country, Paul. My local member of parliament, I call him by his first name. I've got two girls in there who can grow up and be anything they want, brain surgeons, anything. I don't have to bow, I don't have to scrape, and I don't have to bribe my way through all that bureaucracy. And I'll tell you something else. People don't disappear in the middle of the night. But they do get called mafia. Yeah, yeah I know. It's bullshit, but it sells papers. The police believe it. They've got to. They need scapegoats, so what? They bust small-time hoods like the Alampis. They're not Andrangheta? Well, they're not what you call Andrangheta. <laughs> Despite Dad carrying on like it's Calabria after the war around here, the Alampis... God. Well, they couldn't organize their own assholes. Even in Calabria, it's not 1945 anymore. Oh, God, we should tell Dad that. Maybe he'd listen to you, his successful son. The one who gave him a grandson. When did you last see Robbie? It was at Mum's funeral. But I tell you, Paolo, he, he changed. It was like another person. He was withdrawn, embarrassed. Like he, was, he didn't want to know us. Why did he change his name? Look. You see this wine? This is our best. We brought the vines out from Calabria. We make it exactly the same way. The same amount of time, the same amount of red skins. Everything's the same. But it's different. Because the grapes grow on Australian soil. Paolo. Robbie's like me. The seed may be Calabrian, but the fruit's Australian. Mi ricordo il giorno in cui l'andranga ti assassinò il nonno. Quello stesso giorno, il vento buttò giù la vecchia grande querce. Mi ricordo che eri molto arrabbiato. E credevo che tu lo fossi con me, perché pensavo che per colpa mia la querce era caduta. Allora decisi di tagliarla a pezzi e di farla sparire per mettere le cose a posto. Tu non ti saresti arrabbiato, il nonno sarebbe ritornato e noi saremmo stati tutti felici come prima. Incominciai a spaccare e segare, ben deciso di finire prima che tu ritornassi. Si era fatto buio e portai fuori una lampada a petrolio. Cominciò a piovere, ma io continuavo a lavorare. La mamma, piangendo, mi diceva di smetterlo, mi sarei preso una bella polmonite. Ma io non volevo smettere, dovevo tagliare quell'albero. Ma era enorme, avevo soltanto otto anni. Quando sei ritornato, mi nascosi nel recinto delle capre. Avevo vergogna. Vergogna di non aver messo tutto a posto. 
avevo fallito. È stata la stessa cosa due anni fa quando è morta la mamma. Il giudice Bordano era stato appena ucciso. I testimoni principali scomparivano. I risultati di quattro anni di lavoro stavano andando in fumo. Contavano su di me. Non potevo andare via. Io... Io stavo ancora tagliando quell'albero per te. Mia sorella, la zia Pina, ci scrive spesso e parla dei tuoi successi. Siamo molto orgogliosi di te. No, papà, io, io ho fallito, ho fallito come, come figlio, come marito, come padre. Forse, forse non dovevo ritornare. Che diritto ho su mio figlio? Non è mai uno sbaglio per un padre cercare suo figlio. And heading this bulletin, further controversy surrounding the Mitchell Royal Commission with suggestions that Brian Woodlands head of the Woodlands Corporation, is to be called to give evidence. Good afternoon, I'm Terry O'Donnell. Amid growing calls for it to be wound up, the Mitchell Royal Commission into Tax Evasion has today announced that it will resume public hearings next week. Senior Cabinet member, Mr. Laurie Sullivan, attacked the announcement, saying the Commission has already cost the taxpayer over $2 million, and suggested that the Commissioner is extracting the hearings unnecessarily. He went on to say that by calling reputable companies like the Woodlands Corporation before the Commission on the basis of evidence that would not stand up for the law, Mitchell Commission runs the risk of turning into a kangaroo court. OK, buddy. Switching now. OK, switching. Mr. Spano? Mr. Spano. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just... Uh... I'm Claire Boyd. How can I help you? Paolo Spano. Pleased to meet you, Miss Boyd. I haven't got long Saturday's publication day, so... I'll be brief then. I'm trying to contact Nicole Davidson, and I believe you know her. Do I? Yes, I believe so. Where from? Well, I was given your name. Hey, Scoop. What? You cartoon of Woodlands. What are you... <laughs> Soon. And we'll argue truth. <laughs> How's the article go? Oh, I'm just waiting on a confirmation from my source. 
If it's long, Tony, it'll spill from the front page. Uh, you might have to settle for page three this week's book. What? Profile of Gene Shaw going on one. Yeah, well, should sell a few more papers than White Wine and Breeze. Star Slaughter and Mafia Mixer. Woodlands hasn't bought the paper yet. I'm just practicing. <laughs> he won't be keeping cynical old lefties like you, Tony. Well, cheeky young ones either, so you better get the dirt on them. Now, I want to see that story before it goes to lawyers. Quick as you can, eh? Mr. Spanner, why do you want to contact this Nicole? Good morning, Weekly Observer. I'm helping a friend of mine overseas to locate his son here in Australia. Nicole was the son's girlfriend, and uh, she may know how to get in touch with him. What's the son's name? Roberto. Roberto who? We're not sure. His father thinks he might have changed his name. Why? Well, uh, you know how it is sometimes between fathers and sons. Claire? Yep. It's Priscilla, ringing from the commission. Tell her I'll be there in a minute. Tell her you'll ring her back. Mr. Spano, I can't help you. I don't know in Nicole Davidson with a friend called Roberta, so if you just excuse me. Miss Boyd, please. I'm certain you know Nicole. And I'm certain you've just told me a pack of lies. I think we're wasting each other's time, Mr. Spano. Goodbye. Do another sweep and pick us up in about 20 minutes, okay? okay. It's a tragedy, Paolo. Bloody tragedy. So what's this about Robbie disappearing? All Robbie's papers have been cleared out. Drawers, teledex, still off. And the mail was gone when I went back. Well, someone's collecting his mail for him. Then why the intense of my note? Look, mate. His girlfriend's just left him. His mother's just been killed. And the press are after him. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him lying low for a while. I mean, you want to be careful too. The press find out that you're in Australia, they'll eat you alive. I'm using another name. And they won't have my photo. Officially, I'm in Switzerland. Well, who does know you're here? Just Francesco and... Uh... I'd like to keep it that way. Well, you better not go to that memorial service if you want to stay undercover. I'll go for you if you like. See if he's there. Maybe he doesn't want to see me. I was responsible for his mother's death. It's not your fault, mate. Silvestri warned me. I could have stopped the investigation. No, you couldn't. Look, remember what you told me? You choose your side, you take the consequences. She knew the risks. She didn't choose this. It's a long time to wear your ring by accident. No, è più o meno come me la ricordavo. Un po' provinciale, soddisfatta di se stessa, arretrata. Non preoccuparti, tornerò al più presto possibile. Trovare Robby mi è molto più difficile di quanto pensassi. Va bene, ma appena hai notizie da Caridi in Panama, fammelo sapere. No, no, questa linea non è sotto controllo, ma stai attento. La traccia che stai seguendo porta molto in alto. Non fidarti di nessuno. Ah, Francesco. Continui le indagini sulla bomba. Voglio sapere chi ha ucciso Gino. Bene, a presto. Ciao.
sorry, mate. No sign of him. He didn't show. He'll make contact with you. It's only a matter of time. I haven't got time. I have to be back to Rome next week. Well, I'll check around for you. We'll find him. Don't worry. This is Australia. Mr. Daly, are you telling me that you have no knowledge of how the Woodlands Corporation intended to use this loan of $6,700,000 from the Trans-Pacific Investment Bank? That is correct, yes. Even though your accounting practice has extensive dealings with the Woodlands Corporation? We have extensive dealings with a number of large corporate clients. Also involving loans from Trans-Pacific Investment? <clears throat> Your Honour, I fail to see the relevance of Mr. Daly's other clients to this matter. Mr. Braithwaite, a royal commission is, by its very nature, an attempt to establish the broad facts of a situation. Questioning by counsel assisting the commission must, of necessity, be wide-ranging. Mr. Daly, would you please answer the question? Your Honour, it is my submission that it is grossly unfair to... Uh, Mr. Daly's other clients, to be subject to media, speculation, and innuendo... Here we go again. ...it will inevitably arise simply because their names are mentioned at these proceedings. I therefore respectfully request that these hearings move in camera. She's on to something they don't want her to know. And using every trick in the book to stall her. So, um... She's a girl on a man's errand. Jeremy, she was Mitchell's personal choice. A yeah, choice for what? White with three sugars? Huh? Hands full, Jeremy, dear. Miss Boyd, I'm sorry to trouble you again. Ah, uh, excuse me, I'm very busy. I owe you an apology. My name is not Spana. So I gathered. My name is Pizzi, Paolo Pizzi. And I need your help to find my son. My wife told me, little in Nicole. Paolo Pizzi? Jean Shaw's husband? Yes. Uh, no, why should I believe you? Please. So why the funny story? Can we talk somewhere quiet? There's no trace of him in this flat. My police contacts haven't come up with anything yet. My family haven't heard from him, and uh, I have to be back in Italy next week. Nicole is my only lead. That's why I need your help. You'll find them uh, registered under the name of Spano. Didn't they ask for any identification? No. Charming lack of security in this country. <laughs> Some of us would like to keep it that way. You do know Nicole Davidson, don't you? What if I do? Will you put me in touch with her? Perhaps. Why, perhaps? Well, she's been through a rough time lately. Robbie was part of it. But uh, she could still be in contact with him. I don't know. Look, Miss Boyd, I can give you the biggest story you ever had. Like what? I can tell you more about international organized crime than anyone in Australia. Exclusive? Yes but published after I've left Australia. Okay. Okay, I'll set up a meeting. When? As soon as I can. I'll ring her tonight at home. Can't you ring her at work? No, no, it's too risky. She's one of your sources, isn't she? Yes. Where? My job is keeping confidences. The Inkerman Foundation? It's, it's one of these so-called personal growth institutes. She helped me with a series of articles I was doing on them. They make very big bucks flogging a mixture of tattered up common sense and uh, pyramid selling to people who should know better. I like Nicole. And Robbie. Robbie's involved with them? He works there. That's how Nicole met him. Have you met him? No. Nicole contacted me just about the time she and Robbie split up. 
she was working in the accounts department, got disillusioned, leaked me some figures on membership details. She didn't want Robbie to know. Why not? Behind the facade, they are a very heavy little operation. What do you mean? Grand jury in the U.S. found they harassed anyone who tried to leave the organization. After my article came out, they sent people around to try to find out my sources. Nicole was under suspicion for a while, but she managed to write it out. Which is why I don't just ring up and ask for her. Anyway, I have to get back to the commission. Look, this is my home number. You ring me tonight, after 11, I'll have contacted Nicole by then, okay? Okay. I can't give you permission. The Income and Foundation can't give you permission. All we can do is be here to support you in case you get into trouble. Because you, you are the only one who can give yourself permission. You have to give yourself permission to say, hey, who am I kidding? I am the most important person in my life. You have to give yourselves permission to be a success. Now, I, I would just like to wish success on each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, helpers will now move amongst you, inviting you to take the next step on your personal journey of success in partnership with the Inkerman Foundation. Hi, Paul. I'm Terry. Hello. Would you like to register for the full course? Well, I'd like to find out a little more first. Sure. Roads to Personal Power runs over three evenings and two weekends. The $685 fee includes a complimentary copy of Be Yourself. An hour-long videotape featuring Ian Walters that will show you how to achieve everything you want in life. You can register with a deposit of just $75. I need more time to think about it. Paul, I don't mean to be rude, but I sense that you have a problem making decisions. I was the same until I did my first course. Now I'm decisive, assertive. I go out and get what I want. Paul... I believe you are a man who has great strength and power just waiting to be unlocked. This is the key. It's very attractive. But first, could you tell me where the toilets are? suspicion as well now. Excuse me. I'm sorry, but the business center is closed. I was just looking for the toilets. The toilets are at the other end of the corridor. I'll show you. How did you hear about the Inkerman Foundation? Through a friend who works here. Nicole Davis. You know Nicole? Yes. Is she here today? No. She left us three weeks ago. Oh. She didn't tell me she'd left. No, she wouldn't have. City's name was Spano. Southern Cross Hotel. I'll let him check down. Did your girl tell him anything about Nicole? No. But she said he looked Italian. 
Did they say they were sending someone over? You want to straighten yourself out, Dal? Stakes are very high this time. Where's Nicole? I don't know. I haven't seen her since she left. You're not turning flaky on me too, are you? I told you, I don't know where she is. Oh, I see. This is no time for cheap sentiment. Where is that little rat? That's interesting. In the same three years, deposits by a Trans-Pacific subsidiary in Panama have increased 60-fold. 60? So what is it, drugs? Could be, but we think it's a huge international tax evasion scam based in Australia using Panama banks as the laundry. <laughs> All at great expense to the Australian taxpayer. How much expense? Hundreds of millions of dollars. And Woodlands is implicated. Now, that I didn't say. This is all off the record. I still didn't say it. Then why are those lawyers squealing like stuck pigs every time you mention his name? Mm -hmm. oh, give me a line to follow. I can help you nail him. If there was any suggestion, any at all, that the commission was leaking to the press to strengthen public opinion against Woodlands, we'd be closed down faster than you could sharpen your pencil. On what grounds? Trial by media. And they'd be right. No. The courts can't do it on their own anymore, even with a royal commission. You need an independent press to stop bastards like Woodlands getting away with it. Which is why he's trying to buy us out. You know, he's already got 19%. I know. It's only a matter of time before he announces a formal takeover bid and then it's bye-bye, Weekly Observer. I know that. But it takes time to untangle all the companies around Trans-Pacific Investment. We don't even know where to start with Woodlands. That's why we're calling him to testify. Oh, call him to testify? You'll be closed down within a month. Maybe. But it'll be a lot sooner if you start printing unprovable allegations about him. We've got to have Woodland sewn up tight before we go public. This is background on Trans-Pacific Investment Structure. I've got to have it back by the morning. Be careful how you use it. Much to my father's dismay, I would like to stay a lawyer. <laughs> Thanks. Make it easy. One five one seven. Did uh, Miss Boyd call when I was out? No, sir. But a gentleman called. No message, but he said he'd try again. I think he was Italian, sir. Thank you. He's here.
Had one surgically implanted, have you, mate? Might as well. Any news of Robbie? No, nothing on him or his girlfriend. What about this Inkerman Foundation? A fair go. He only told me an hour ago. She was there, Roger. I saw her. Yeah. I'm having a word with my boss in the morning. He had dealings with IF and his state police days. I thought you were federal police at the Rock Force. No, state and federal. Hannaford's ex state police force. Fraud squad. They upped his rank and put him in charge of drug force. Fraud squad. What did the fraud squad. Yeah, I'm asking in the morning, okay? Here. Guess who our boys snapped arriving this morning with a high level Italian business delegation? Sabatino. Gianfranco Sabatino. Yeah, here in Australia. Oh, he's an guard says business. But I'll bet London to a brick that the only business he does in Australia is in a little town called Wound Gabby. Sabatino doesn't have any links with Wound Gabby? We busted nearly a ton of grass there on Friday. The paper said three. Oh, yeah, well, it was enough to hurt him. That's why he's here. Sabatino doesn't fly halfway around the world over a ton of marijuana. He's here for something bigger. What, what? Maybe he's got Robbie. Now, what? Did I ever tell you about Lupara Bianca? No. The Andrangheta doesn't use shotguns anymore. They move with the times. Now it's Kalashnikovs or C4. Or more and more often, Lupara Bianca, the white shotgun. People just disappear out to sea into an acid bath. We never find the body. But no one ever hears from them again. Look, just because Robbie hasn't made contact with you doesn't mean the Andrangheta have got him. They got Jean. Yeah, by mistake, they'll try to get you. They can get me through Robbie. Ah, oh, bullshit, he's just lying low. Roger. His flat cleaned out. On indefinite leave. No appearance at the memorial service. And now Sabatino arrives in the country. It's a coincidence. I mean, you don't even know that it was Sabatino that killed Jean. I mean, lots of people want to get rid of you. Roger, we've got to find Robbie, and fast. I'm pulling out all stops, mate. But you better be careful. If Sabatino is out here to supervise a hit on someone, the most likely target is you. He doesn't know I'm here. You hope.
Foundation is synonymous with success. Listen to what some of our graduates say about how the Inkerman Foundation changed the way they do business. I used to own a small fish shop. I made a living, but not much more. Then five years ago, I discovered the Inkerman Foundation. Now I own a whole string of takeaway food. Hello. I'm service here, Mr. Starr. I own an importing company. Just a minute. The Inkerman Foundation taught me that if you want it, you can have it. Mr. Starr, are you there? And? My own importing company. The Inkerman Foundation taught me that if you want it, you can have it. Oh, and incidentally, I was so impressed with the product, I bought into the company. Now I'm the director of the Inkerman Foundation. Magistrate continues next Thursday night at 8.30. And there's more drama next Tuesday when Jonathan Price and Anna Massey star in the intriguing real-life murder mystery, The Man from the Prue, Tuesday night at 9.30. Coming up next on ABC, The First Australians, right after a news update.